everybody. I hope you're doing well today. All right, today I'm changing out the head on my banjo. And I thought I would go ahead and make a video just on the steps involved in changing out your banjo head for those people who want to try it. It's not that expensive um, to try a different sound out on your banjo. Naturally, things that affect the sound of your banjo are the woods it's made of, the tone ring, right? You can't really change those things once you have your banjo, but here's the things you can change, all right? You can change out your bridge, okay? That'll affect the sound. You can change out the head. You can change out the strings, right? Those are inexpensive things you can do. Now, obviously there are some heads that get more expensive uh, as when you get into the natural things, and I'm gonna actually be putting a skin head on, um, but I'm gonna take you through the process, and I hope you enjoy the video. Here you go. All right, on the table below me, I have everything I need to change out my banjo head, okay? I have, first I have some garbage in the way, but I have a new head, right? So I'm gonna be putting that new head on. Here are the tools that I need. I need a screwdriver because I have a wooden armrest on there. So I'll be taking that off with a screwdriver. And I also have a wrench that's a uh, 5 16 deep well socket that I need to uh, loosen the hooks of the banjo. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just take off all that stuff. So I have a tuner on here. I have two capos on here and you'll see why in a minute. That can be a big help. But um, So the first thing I'm going to do is just remove <clears throat> I'm going to just remove the armrest and that will be just a couple of twists here. Shouldn't be a big deal at all. That's one one bonus of this armrest that I really like is that um, it's not installed through the hooks. So it's very easy to take on and off. As you can see there, very easy to take on and off. Okay, now, step number two is to loosen the strings. So we're going to loosen the strings so that we can take the bridge off. But, so here's what I'll start doing first. I'm just going to start loosening them. I've got a floppy mess here, right? So since I just changed these strings out very recently, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a capo, I'm going to put it right, let's see, put it right here, okay, and what that's going to do is that's going to hold my strings in place so I don't mess up the top where I have them wound up, up there, because I want to reserve these strings, so I'm going to use that first capo, other people do this different ways, then I'm just going to flatten my bridge out and it falls right out. Very simple there. Okay, now, just to be safe, <laughs> I'm gonna put on another capo, um, but I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna loosen them some more until I can get them off the back here. See, I can't get them off the back yet, so I'm just gonna pull right here as I'm loosening to get it off the back. And once I can get it off the back tail piece, which I can't yet, then I'll start with my next. Capo. So you can just pull the string through the capo, okay? So that'll come off easily. Now I'm gonna work on the four string. I've already done um, two heads with these same strings this way. So you can do it. It's just a little bit of a process. Um, or if you need strings, just go ahead and take your strings off. That'll make it a lot easier for you. So, okay, we've got our strings loosened for the most part. Now I'm just gonna take this second capo that I have and put it on there farther down. Now, making sure I've got all five strings under there. That just makes sure that I don't lose anything. Then I'm gonna take them all off at the back of my uh, tail piece. That one's not, oh there it goes. The four string's always fun, so I'm gonna see if I can get a little more out of it, I can. All right, so I've got them all off there. Now I'm just gonna loop this over and again, this is only if you want to 
save these strings. And then I'm just going to reach under there at the edge and snatch them with the capo. See? So that just gets them out of the way. I can get them out of the way further by just pushing them up. Clears this space for me. Now I'm, I'm all clear. I've got the go all clear here. All right. So I'm ready to loosen the current head. Okay? So all I do here is go around and loosen. Now, um, people do this different ways, but when you're loosening, you're not really going to break your head. So, um, I don't even need this probably. When you're loosening, you're not really going to break your head. So it's not as crucial to go around in any sort of pattern, but I'm just going to sort of go around and loosen everything up just a touch here. And then we'll come back and do more. somewhat. So now here's what I'm going to do that you may or may not be able to do based on the hooks that you have on your banjo. I loosened it just enough. Loosened it just enough to take it off there. And then I'm going to let it come down. Okay? So I loosened it just enough so that it comes down. That's because I don't want to take it all the way apart. <laughs> now, you can take it all the way apart if you want to. And I've done that before. This is quicker if you're able to do it, see? And that reserves your little, um, if you have a washer or anything like that, and you're not gonna lose any of your nuts there. And um, so yeah. Now, when you get to your tailpiece, there's different kinds of tailpieces, obviously, but <clears throat> I'm just going to loosen mine just enough to where I feel like I can get the head off. And I've done this a bunch now, so I think I know pretty well how high I need it, but we'll see. I may have to come back and correct. not that tough and where we need to be careful is when we put the new head on that's the only place we really need to worry about uh, because we can break our head and if you've invested a lot of money in that head you're gonna be upset if you break it so but you can't it's just it's not that simple to break okay so now we've got all of our hooks released all of our jewelry is dangling and we can take our tension hoop off okay so I'm just gonna slide it under that tail piece there and that's the tension hoop below that is our head and our rim and our tone ring sorry it's our head and our rim and our tone ring um, so I don't want to damage my I don't want to damage my head, so I've taken the tailpiece and just actually turned it around and gotten it out of the way. So what is sitting there now on top of my rim is my tone ring, which is underneath the head, and the head. It's squeezed in there, okay? So we just pop that off and see how that come off. And now we've got our, ring, our uh, tone ring, all right? Let me set this down carefully on my table. Okay, so now we've got our head and our tone ring. 
Mine is a rolled brass tone ring on this banjo. So I will just carefully remove it. Roll breast tone ring, head is removed. That took me under 10 minutes. Okay. Now, we get our new head. Uh, but, first, um, this is a good opportunity to clean the inside of your banjo. Um, it's sometimes hard to get up inside of here. So, uh, you know, take this moment to clean everything. Um, even right here, you may get some dust or dirt. Clean it. Um, if you're changing your strings, obviously you're going to clean and condition your fretboard. Um, but we are ready to install the new head now. So let's get on to that. It's back here. And I'm putting a fuzzy goat skin head on here. Um, so things to consider when you're putting on a new head. First of all, most people are going to have heads like this where it's got a logo. So, most people, and you do what you want to do, but most people will put the logo at the back of their banjo toward the tailpiece. So, you'd want to line that up, okay? And how you line it up, my banjo anyway, has a section where the neck is on the tension hoop. That's where the neck goes. So I know I need to line it up. That's the neck. I need to line it up so it's perfectly straight there. Or close to straight. One thing that is just a pet peeve of mine is if it's crooked. And this one I put on a little bit crooked and that bothered me. But um, So you usually will have a tension rod or something going down here. You can see that through there. See how you can see the rod through there. You can line it up to that. Now, some people uh, will install it that direction. Other people will install it this direction, where the logo is toward the neck. You know, you're going to do what, whatever you want to do there. I have never seen anybody install it at the bottom or top. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do that. You do what you want to do. <laughs> but I'm just telling you what we normally do there. Okay, so now... We take our tension rod, our, no. So now we take our tone ring, whatever that may be, whatever material that may be, and we just put it inside of our head so that, and it may be hard, it may be easy. Mine's a little hard right now because it's that natural skin and it's got a stretch. And some of this will happen on the banjo, but I'm just sort of getting it in place here. Um, and it keeps popping out but that's okay we'll do it on the banjo but I've got to think about how I want to orient this onto my banjo uh, and what I'm thinking is let's see I don't want the hairs to be I want to be going with the hairs so I'm thinking I might I might do it something like this. Um, this would be good as well. I like that white piece to be lower so that I can, you can see the texture there. So I might do something like, something like that would be good, I think. So that would put my neck up here. So I'm just going to orient that onto my banjo and press it in a little bit there where I feel it'll be good and then I'm going to use my tension hoop to put it down and I locked it in of course and you'll have to you'll have to work with you, with your hooks here if you do it this way so that they get out of your way uh, Something like that might be okay. So then I line up where my neck's going to be. Put that over top of your head and gently start pressing it down. Now this one's going to be a little bit more tricky just because I have that skin head. Uh, but you give it even pressure and you start pressing it in. And 
if you have a synthetic it'll probably just pop right on and this won't take you as long but so now I just look around to make sure my head is on where I want it to be right uh, which I'm thinking that that's pretty good now all I have to do now which is not going to be easy but I'll press this down for you it's going to be easy if you're using a uh, synthetic head but now I just get my hooks back do you see how I just pulled that hook back my hand tighten that that bad boy right there and get him close and just get it to where it stays with some tension I'm gonna go back here and check this again I'm gonna slide that just a touch to make sure that this is lined up properly okay then I'm gonna come on the other side see I can press down now a little bit because I've got this one in I'm gonna come on the other side I'm gonna get another hook and bring it up and see if I can't do the same and this might be harder because the other side loosen it up a little more Loosen it up a little more bring it up while I'm pressing down loosen it up as much as I can until I can get it in that groove and it just came off because this side is higher but what I'm gonna do is hook that in and we'll come down here press down until I can get purchase here on my screw on my hook there and see yours may or may not come off all right so I got a little bit there I'm gonna get just a little more on it there we go all right so now I have two hooks in so I'm just gonna go down here because these are kind of up high go down here and get another hook in and we're just gonna make do this process see how um, I'm gonna have to loosen that a lot on a synthetic head it would have went down farther and I wouldn't have had to do that but that's okay you may not have long enough hooks to do this anyway but I got I got that one attached so I'm gonna hand tie it again come back get me another little crank on it let's see another little crank on it a couple of cranks all right we're going good now we come back we again make sure that this has not moved we're still lined up here we're gonna be good all right so now that I have three hooks in, I'll come back over here a lot more work to do and it's loosey-goosey but we're getting it evenly on by doing this so then I just keep going okay I come back over here you probably hear Amber and John because they're on the back back porch oh no oh no tell me that did not go under oh Lord have mercy tell me that did not go under I have to pause the video okay so I'm back I had a mishap <laughs> I had a little mishap you'll see some new, you'll see some new tools have been added back on this back side because I let one one little nut fall and it bounced and of course it went through the deck so I got a piece of tape <laughs> and my little measuring stick and I went between the cracks and I fished her out what's funny is it, it's really funny but now I've put down a cloth so hopefully 
that won't happen again but let me get back to what I was doing here where, where did I lose that at where's my lost boy there he is okay so what I was saying before is that <laughs> you'll probably hear John and Amber because they are getting the poles ready because we're going to do some fishing this afternoon. And it's funny that I had to go fishing already. I find that funny. Okay. So, we're still loosey-goosey. Make sure my camera is still running. And we just rock on. All the way around. This will probably be a lot easier on you if you have a better work surface <laughs> and no holes in your floor <laughs> like I do out here. We have um, we have fishing kayaks so we can get in these lakes and rivers around here and get and kayak and go fishing. Uh, yesterday we, we just paddled around some, didn't do any fishing, but. Today, we're just going to walk around a creek uh, into where a river gets small and stuff. We're going to walk around. Uh, we may take our boots. We don't have wading boots or anything like that. Just our farm work boots kind of thing. Just your tall boots that go up to about mid-calf. Things like this you can do yourself and you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's not that difficult. However, if you are afraid to do something, I mean really afraid, then I would recommend you take it to somebody. And if you're like me, there's not really people around here. I'm in the heart of the country and I'm in the heart of some areas where people play banjo, but there's not a lot of luthiers around. That's just sort of a, I don't know. There's not a lot of luthiers. There's music shops all over the place that can do some things, but specific banjo things and stuff like that, I'd have to go pretty far away. So I try to do most things on my own. And the only way I learned this is by doing it and it's okay, you can do it. So I don't want you to be afraid to try because it is doable and it's really as you can see it is not crazy difficult really it's not these things go together they're parts like a puzzle and they're not even a puzzle because they're easy puzzles can be hard but <laughs> funny thing we've been having a lot of fun here at the house because one of the things I got for Amber school uh, this year is um, well we've been doing this but we got logic puzzles okay so I got a workbook completely full of logic puzzles so I have her do some of those every day because they're you know they're just really good mental exercises problem solving all kind of things but they're so much fun that's the stuff that I really enjoyed um, when I was growing up. Puzzles that were logic puzzles. Breaking codes, things of that nature. Um, but we have so much fun with that. <laughs> um, and occasionally, we will all be stumped by the puzzle. So one of the one of the recent ones, one of my favorite kinds is I don't know what you call this, but um, it's where you have let's say you have four people. One of these was um, it wasn't very difficult, but they 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 get harder as you go through the book. But one of them was um, just to give you an example, it was four people. At, they go to a donut shop and they all buy a different donut and a different drink okay 
So then you naturally have four people, four donut choices and four drink choices. Okay, so you have a little grid down below that, that has all those. So I have all my hooks in, it looks like. You just double check that you have all your hooks in. Oh, no, I have one still going. Okay, so then it'll give you your truth statements, your facts, okay? So you have something like Aaron doesn't like fruity donuts, but he loves hot drinks, okay? So you you'll probably have two you'll have two fruit donut choices and two hot drinks and two cold drinks and two fruit donuts and two other kind of donuts, okay? So then you get your statement, okay? Then it'll say, you know, Bobby and Jennifer uh, like cold drinks, but Jennifer is allergic to milk, okay? So you get about four statements like this, and you go through and you make your selections, and, you know, once you select one that you know, you can cancel out the others, and it's just so much fun. And that was just the first one, but it gets harder as it goes, and it's just so fun. And that's just one example of the many puzzles that are in there. But, um, okay, now, we have our Fuzzy Goat installed. Oh, is that not beautiful? Is that not beautiful? Uh, but, let's just, isn't that gorgeous? Okay, um, so now what we're going to do is... I'm going to turn my, if I can, I was able to, turn my tailpiece around. And uh, that one doesn't fit that, of course. Let's see if I can get my... So I'm going to tighten the tailpiece back up some. See if this one will fit it. Yeah. And... Uh, then I will go through and start tightening up my and we may need to do a little more work on the tailpiece and we'll do that later but so now I'm going to go through and start tightening up all of my hooks now, one thing you're going to notice is when you tighten a hook, okay, what you're doing is you're pulling down on this and making it tighter. When you tighten a hook, the hooks on either side of it might become loose, okay? And as you can see here, I've got a lot more tension up here than I do down here. See how it gets all... So I'm going to start down here because this is just way loose and I get tight up here, okay? So I've just done that while I was putting it on. Unconsciously made that section tighter, which is fine. Because I only did it a little bit. I didn't do a ton here. So now, I'm just going to go through. And I like to use uh, the same method, kind of, that I used before to take it off. Um... I like to uh, tighten everything up, sort of like if you think of a pizza or something, you go across each opposite side, okay? I'm sort of uh, going to start over here and get this a little bit tighter, this whole side, because it was so loose, and um, it was just so loose over there that I want to uh, do that. Now. If you don't have a precision drum dial tensioner tool that checks your head tension, don't worry about it. I haven't had one of those until just recently. Um, it's a very cool tool. And if you want to be precise at each hook, you can absolutely go get you one. Uh, they are way cool. But, um... Now again, remember, I'm just tightening up this side to get a little more tension on this side because this side was already tight. See, it was already tight. I just want to tighten this side up and I'll periodically check because I want to make sure that this doesn't get too tight. So what I may do is loosen this side a little bit as I'm tightening. 
But that precision tool, I'll put a link for it if you want to check it out. But uh, that precision tool is really nice if you have synthetic heads because you can get your tension perfect all the way around. Yeah, I'm going to loosen the other side. That's what I'm going to do because this side... Uh, But you can get the perfect tension. So what you would do is you get it all, all the way around. You get it to where it um, feels like it's on there good. See, I've still got some stuff going on right here. But here is kind of tight. So if you have that happen, you just come back over here and you loosen these some. But I've got to get this section tight. So what I'm going to do is just, okay, that one was already loose. I'm just gonna just go and just just take a little bit see that one was already loose too take a little bit off of some of these not a ton just just a little bit off okay of some of these and um, there that loosened it up a little bit now What will happen, uh, wh what happens now is, I'm going to um, tighten these up all the way around just slightly, okay? And then I'm going to feel it again. Then at that point, if you have a, if you have a synthetic head, you just want to feel all the way around. See how I'm still way loose down here? You want to get the same tension everywhere okay you want to get the same tension everywhere you can do that by feel you can also do it by sound and tune it to something um, but you want to do it to where everything is nice and tight um, but leave just a touch of play in it okay just leave a touch of play in it and you can do this by feel and then at that point, once you've got it to where everything sort of feels the same, you tighten and loosen as needed, then we'll reinstall everything. But what I've got going on is I've got some looseness over here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm there. So now, uh, let's say you've got it where you want it. And even if you don't, if you've got one of these and you got to wait, we can put the strings back on. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to put our strings back on. Our banjo here. Okay, we're gonna need a bridge. This here is a Grover compensated bridge. Same one I've used for these reviews. And uh, I've got videos on bridge placement, but I will quickly go over your bridge placement. Once you get the strings back on, you take a ruler or any sort of measuring device and you measure from your nut to your 12th fret. Okay, that distance is going to be your starting point for your bridge. Okay, so that distance from there, the 12th fret, to the nut, you measure that distance. Then you measure it again. And whatever that distance is, is where you will place your bridge. Okay, that's where your starting point for your bridge is. Then once you've got the strings up to tension and all that, your head is the proper tension, then you will get to your intonation. And I do have a video on this, and uh, on how to go through all, this, all these steps as well. But, um, yeah, so now we're going to loose my strings, except I'm going to leave that like that, okay? So you've got these numbers, and then we're going to just take each individual string here, the proper one, they got a little twisted, <clears throat> but I'll just take those and get them back onto my tailpiece where they go, right? The hardest part about this is undo it, it looks like. And then we'll pull and get some tension back this direction, so that it's just tight enough, okay? And then we'll get my next string, and do the same, my second string, and I'll get it put on, and then we're going to just pull just to get a little tension there, so it doesn't come off the back side. I'll do okay. So now I've got all five strings on. I'm just going to place my bridge under there. And uh, then I will start tightening. And you can tighten it through the capo. It's not going to hurt anything. You see how it's, it's getting tighter. It just keeps tension. Okay. So as it gets tighter, we want to put our string where it goes. On the banjo. Um, now... I will not be doing any tuning of this and I won't be putting tons of tension on this either because my head is not 
has not settled. Probably going to be closer to up there. At this point we can look at our strings and we can check and make sure that we have everything lined up good. Uh, I want to get those hairs down. <laughs> Never had to deal with that before. Okay, and then we can take our last capo off and see how loose I've got these strings. I will tighten them up just a touch more, but not much. Um, remember, I loosened that as well. But we've got everything where it's supposed to be, and this is what it's going to look like. Wow, that is a beauty. I'll let you guys get some good looks at this. Oh, my hook is so loose over here, it's coming off. Get Give you some good views of this puppy here. Beautiful. Wow, I can't wait to hear what this thing's going to sound like. Um, and that's what it looks like from the underside. I suspect that what this is going to do is going to be really muted. And I'm going to really like it. I, I really enjoy the muted sound. So I am really excited to hear what it sounds like, but of course I can't do that yet. Wow, would you look at that beauty. That's gonna be really fun. That's gonna be really fun and exciting to play. But I think it is gonna mute it somewhat. But I wanted to give you some shots of it. And, yep, so. If you have a synthetic head, one more time, I want to say this again, one more time. If you have a synthetic head, this process is easier. It's quicker. And uh, you can fine tune it very precisely with that tool. And um, you don't have to worry about humidity or any kind of weather. It's going to stay the same. That's why most people use them. But you'll also find a lot of people that use the good old hides, animal hides. Lots of different ones, by the way. Um, but they will stretch animal hides and use those. And there's a reason for that too, okay? So, I, even though this is the head change video, I want you to understand too that um, you can explore all these different sounds with these heads, these bridges, these strings, everything. And um, it's a lot of fun to do that. If you're at all a tinkerer, um, you'll enjoy it. But for a relatively inexpensive, now these are a little more expensive. The goat skins and the fuzzy goats are more expensive, but uh, overall, the cost of your banjo, it's not very expensive to try out these different sounds with your bridges, your strings, your, high, uh, your heads. Um, so there we go. That was how to change out your banjo head. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And um, let me know down in the comments if you're going to try this or if you have tried this and do it. And if I left anything out that might help somebody else, please leave it below in the comments for people to, um, to read. Um, because I want to help people and I want everybody in our community to help each other. You know, that's what we're here for. But um, the last thing I need to install is my armrest. And I'm going to wait on that until I get the head um, where I want it. Um, so, yeah. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of it. Before I go, I always want to remind you that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, y'all.